Sakina, yes, indeed. Thanks very much for giving us that uh, the background as to where we are. And as you as you mentioned, our uh, home for the broadcast is the Kucha Kop water plant. And this has been in the making for many, many years. And of course, just in a in a, in a very basic way to explain exactly what goes on here is that borehole water is drawn. They identified a whole lot of boreholes that are here in this area. That water, of course, is then pumped up. And I mean, if you see the water that here, it's full of manganese and iron. And what they do is they clean this. And then that, of course, is going to be uh, pushed out to a lot of the residents. But only about 10 million litres of water. And the thing is, is that there is such a major shortage of water, a lot more needs to be done to try and help the Nelson Mandela Bay municipality. And we really are focusing on the entire municipality at the moment, not just Trebecha, which is pretty much so where we are closest to. I'm not even sure if this is going to service Trebecha in any way. I don't think that this is the intention for here. But you speak to a lot of people and the residents in the area just say that it also, it's a big problem and there, there are many different aspects that have created this water situation that they find themselves in. Um, obviously the weather plays a massive role but it's also the maladministration, it's the infrastructure, it's the ever-changing government that is running this municipality and they can never get down to work. But now we have got the mayor with us who has been in this position for I think since last year it was September. Well here he is, let me get to him. Uh, he can tell us more about this. Of course um, the mayor here in the Nelson Mandela Bay municipality is Ratif Urdendal. September? Was it September last year that you came in? Yes, um, I've been here for six months and uh, it has been a challenging situation because this is a one in a hundred year drought. Um, so it was extremely difficult to make sure that we um, manage our water resources to such an extent that we don't run out of water. But I'm very happy to report that um, a number of our projects have come onto line and uh, yeah, here we're at the Kuchakup uh, Wells Treatment Plant and uh, it's the biggest biofiltration plant that's ever been built in South Africa. And, and, and very impressive at that, because I believe that it is going to be fully operational by, hopefully, fingers crossed, Friday. That's the, that's the set date for this to begin working. Yes, absolutely. And, and we need to bring all of our water augmentation projects online. Um, the city has spent about 1.2 billion rand um, to augment um, the water reticulation with 100 megalitres of water. And that's a lot of water. It represents about a third of what we use during good times. Um, so most of those projects are now coming to fruition and we're very happy about that. Uh, the aim is obviously to make sure that Nelson Mandela Bay does not run out of water. That would be disastrous for, for uh, our metro, for any city. Um, and uh, we're doing the best um, to try and manage our water resources very responsibly. But already there's so many different towns and cities that are complaining that they don't have water and that they haven't had water for days on end and that's in this municipality and you have to almost um, share the water supply between the different the different areas and this is of great concern to the residents. Yes, absolutely. But it is also the responsible thing to do. So up till a couple of months ago, um, we over extracted from our dams to make sure that there is sufficient water for everybody in Nelson Mandela Bay. But unfortunately, because we were over extracting, uh, over extracting from our dams, it meant that we were actually bringing day zero closer. So what we've decided to do is to stay within the restrictions that was imposed on us by the Department of Water and Sanitation. That, however, means that on any day, uh, given day, there will be a shortage of supply. We try and manage the, the, the water that is given to certain communities, uh, and that means that um, on any given day, there will be a community without water in Nelson Mandela Bay. But the alternative is making sure that there's sufficient water for everybody now, and if it doesn't rain, we run out of water. We can never have that because it will destroy the economy of the city and lead to humanitarian disaster. So it's difficult, it's a bit of medicine to take at the moment, but it's the right thing to do and the responsible thing to do. So when we look at the, the, the budget that you've got to try and keep the infrastructure going, I mean, this, I think the budget, the annual budget is sitting at around about 1.7 billion, is that, is that correct? But I mean, when you look around and you see the state of the infrastructure, is that even going to touch sites? Well, I think that first of all, one must acknowledge that um, the city has invested quite a lot now in water augmentation projects. However, we have not 
in the past maintain our infrastructure as, as well as it should have. So although we're bringing additional water into the city, we're actually still losing quite a bit of water through water leaks um, and, and water pipes. Some of our water infrastructure is more than 100 years old. So if we look at, at on average, we've spent less than 2% of our total budget on, on maintenance. I'm happy to report that council took a decision a month ago to draft a water services master plan that will now focus on how do we maintain our water reticulation over the next 10 years. And it's a game changer for Nelson Mandela Bay. So no longer build new infrastructure to augment water, but how do you protect the water that you already have and don't waste it through water leaks and pipers? I want to get to water leaks because um, uh, your, uh, the previous guest that we had, Joseph, was talking about the water leaks and how much water is actually wasted and it's unacceptable. And then I've been flooded with people coming to me on social media to say he's talking rubbish because we have we, we make sure that we report these water leakages that are going on for days and weeks on end and nobody arrives to fix them. And this is just water that's going to waste. So as much as we ask the, the residents to hold back and not use as much water, they also ask you that you come and fix these leakages which is, is spilling out millions of litres of water. Absolutely, and I think that therein lies the crux of this trust deficit between the public and the municipality. Look, on any given week, there's about 700 new leaks. So it's very easy that a backlog can exist because if the municipality can't keep up with that, fixing the, the, the new leaks every week, um, there will be a backlog created. There was in actual fact a backlog because there were supp uh, supply chain issues, but just between February, uh, February and, and March, we've managed to fix about uh, 6,500 to 7,000 leaks. Um, from the backlog. Currently, as we speak, there is, um, I'm told, just over a thousand leaks outstanding, which means that we've basically catched uh, a court up. And what we want is we want a, a 48 hour turnaround uh, time when it comes to, to leak repair. But it is difficult. As I say, the key now becomes we need to maintain our existing infrastructure and replace some of our pipelines because we just cannot keep patching it the whole time. And that's unfortunately what's been happening over the last uh, couple of years. Yes, we've, we've done marvelous insofar as uh, building new infrastructure to augment our supply. But the reality is that our water losses now represent almost uh, exactly that, that we have uh, built in terms of additional capacity. And that is scary. You know, some people also look at the issue of coalition governments and actually getting things going because it, it just takes, there's just so much backlog. Obviously, when you look at the turmoil when it comes to the management at the other levels of a municipality and you've got the biggest coalition government in the world, am I mistaken in saying that, in the Nelson Mandela Bay Metropoli uh, uh, um, Metropolitan, is yes. that the case? Yes. As far as we know. Well, certainly in, in, in Nelson, uh, in the country, but uh, we are told in the world currently it is the biggest coalition. And we've seen in Nelson Mandela Bay over the last um, year and a half how difficult it was um, and service delivery actually came to a grinding halt last year. We couldn't get budgets passed and uh, I'm happy to say that there's relative stability since Feb uh, since September last year. Um, I think that political parties uh, that's currently in council, they actually realise that they have to put their self in aside for the benefit of, of the residents. This city has lost nearly a billion rand in grant funding over the past three years up till June last year because of its inability to spend. And in a city where you still have um, a, a massive housing backlog, that's absolutely criminal. So we have to do everything in our ability to work together. And I think that over the last couple of months we've actually uh, proven that we can do that as, as a coalition government. And I'm very happy to say that uh, uh, many politicians, most politicians actually in the city have played their part over the last couple of months. All right, Rutif, we have to leave it there. Mayor, thank you very much for joining us here. This is the Nelson Mandela Municipality Mayor, uh, Rutif Oedendal, not Rutif Khwesen. <laughs> because I have to tell you a funny story. As I'm Googling the mayor, I just put um, Rutif and you know when you Google, you leave it at whatever comes up and I put drought there and suddenly all the results are for um, Ratip's drought in golf. And I'm like, really? Does this mayor not work? Meantime, all it did was have <laughs> results for a tip person. And that is not what we're looking for. But apparently, it's not the first time it's happened. <laughs> anyway, this is Ratip uh, uh, Udendal, who is the mayor here. Let's take a break. We'll have lots more from here when we see you next.